Today, as we come around the Lord's table, I wanted to think about the firstborn, ultimately leading up to the firstborn of the dead. You know, God cultured a people that would understand what, what he was doing in the earth. It, it, it wouldn't do for God just to send his son and say, see, he's my firstborn. It's like, what, what really are you talking about? God began early on to culture man's mind, specifically a certain people's mind, to be able to understand him when he said something, when he revealed something, that they would be able to catch on. This is what he's talking about. Now, God had to start off with something that was impossible because it's going to be God's work now. So it had to be something that was impossible. But he works with Abraham and tells him, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a son. Now, he waited until after the time where he said it was absolutely impossible for him to have a son. Even Sarah knew it. Uh, how can I have, how can I, this is impossible. Well, yeah, it was impossible. For the flesh, for the natural, this was an impossibility. But God's, God's God now. He's going to do the impossible. And once he does the impossible, then he's going to build on that thing that he did and um, bring men up to, to the point where he'll be able to understand now what he's talking about. Israel. Now, Israel, obviously, the whole nation of Israel was an impossibility. It was built on Isaac's birth. A birth that was impossible. So you got Abraham was called out of to a land that he didn't even know where he was going. He believed God. He went out. God promised him a son. He got a miraculous son, and God builds a whole nation on this work that he's done. Later, he's going to send him down into Egypt. They're going to begin to oppress him. God's going to bring up. He's going to start teaching these people how to think. In Exodus chapter 4 here, verse 22, it says, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son. They belong to me. They wouldn't even be here if it wouldn't have been for me. Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Now, this is something that God, God's reckoning back to the promise that he gave to Abraham that this, this was the first one that was born like this. Firstborn, miracle child. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, if you refuse to let my firstborn go, now remember, this is the God of love now. This is a God that I fear is not well known in the world today. This is what he said, if you don't let my son go, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Now God's going to say, God's worked all this to this point. It required God. You wouldn't even get here naturally. Isaac would have never been born. He wouldn't have had a firstborn, but he did. Now here he's telling Pharaoh, you let him go or I'll take your firstborn. Now we all know how the account goes. He said no, God killed all the firstborn. He killed all the firstborn, both of men and the beast. You say, wait a minute. He didn't kill them all. Well, they were all going to be killed. They were all going to be killed, and he gave them a provision. You want to save your firstborn? You want to do that? All right, give them the sacrifice, put the blood on the doorpost. God's teaching us how to think. How are you going to be saved? How is God going to save many souls alive? Well, some of them did it. They did it, and their firstborns were saved. They didn't die. Pharaoh, he lost his son because he didn't, he didn't believe. Now here, a little while later, over in chapter 13, you start thinking, God hadn't forgot this now. 13, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whosoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast. It is mine. In other words, they wouldn't have even been there 
had God not saved them. Now I saved them, so we're get start, God, starting to think with God now. God sanctifies everything he saves. Everything that God saves belongs to him. Now God's going to do something with this, these people that he saved. It's not just random. God doesn't do random. He saved them for a purpose. He did it when he saved them. And Moses said unto the people, remember this day. Remember what God told us today. Remember, it was him that took us out. It was him that saved the firstborn. It shouldn't be a hard thing for you to give the first, the first to the Lord. He gave it to you to begin with. You wouldn't have anything. If it wouldn't have been for God. Now, he gave it to you. Are you sanctified? You give it back. Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by the strength of the hand of the Lord brought you out from this place. And he starts he's laying down these, these, God's teaching men how to reason, how to think. Well, God saved the firstborn, and now he's going to give them something to do with it. I, I, I just love this reasoning. God's training our mind. Our mind didn't need to be trained. Now later, remember at the foot of Mount Sinai, Moses goes up. He goes up the mountain. Stands, stays up there with the Lord. He comes back down, and what does he see? Well, he sees the reason why God was angry while he was up on the mountain. He sees the calf. And then every, he, he, tells, he says, who is on the Lord's side? And the tribe of Levi separated themselves from Israel and, and gathered unto Moses. God didn't forget that. He didn't forget that a little bit later on here. And on Numbers 3.12, this is significant. Numbers 3.12, remember the Lord, he hadn't forgot about the firstborn. And, and how, how, how does the Lord look at a person that makes, their, makes him their preference? Does he just say, well, everyone, you know, everyone should, but look at what they did. Look at what God said, Numbers 3.12. And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that opened the matrix among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine. Oh, I tell you, when you start seeing what God's done in the person of Christ and you start seeing that God's made you his, he, he put you in Christ, he sanctified you, He's, he's changing you into the same image of Christ in order that he might glorify you together with him. You start seeing, I belong to the Lord. I'm his. Now see, we come to a table to remember his death till they come. To remember what God has accomplished in the person of Christ in order that this remembrance will be pleasant. Oh, we, This is a, a marvelous thing. It says, because all the firstborn are mine. Now, they already are. They were, when today he created man, they belong to him. But we're talking about a, he's, he's brought you back. He, not only do you belong to him by nature, the fact that he's put you in Christ, you become a unique jewel, like a diadem. In other words, God's going to work in you in a precise way that he can't work in anybody else except they're in Christ. Because all the firstborn are mine. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. Mine shall they be. I am the Lord. I see, I, did, I didn't see the significance way back there when I read it, that what God was doing. God was doing this the whole time he had this in mind. He's working all this the whole time. I'm sanctifying me a people that when I look at them, I don't get angry. Amen. I, I, can, I, can, I can actually love them and it not hurt them. God's he's working all things together for our good. Well, God remembers. Not only does he remember everyone he saves, he uses everyone that he saves. Now, here we, we're kind of seeing a little bit broader picture of that God can... He took now, and he took a, a one tribe of the, of the nation of Israel, and he set them apart, not just the firstborn, but one of the tribes now. 
He's showing us God's very specific. They, this, was, this was a tribe that preferred him. Now, see, all these attributes are going to be actually bound up in one person, the person of Christ. Christ, it, he always did the things that pleased the Father. He was the one, he, this is the, one, the only begotten of the Son, only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This was the only one, just like Levi was the only one of the tribes that did this. God taught us how to think about Jesus. Remember Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to what? To be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. God set Christ Christ did the work, Christ died the death, took away sin, rose from the dead, and now everyone who's in him participates in all that. In other words, God can look at you and you can be accepted in the beloved. Who is the beloved? He is the firstborn from the dead. In other words, there's a whole race of men, just like when Abraham had Isaac. It started a whole race, a whole nation that had their identity in what Abraham did. He believed God. They were, he was the father of the faithful. Now, in Christ, he, he, Christ has started a new, a new, this is a new thing. It wasn't anything like this before. He's the firstborn from the dead. Colossians 1.18, and he is the head of the body. So if you're in Christ, you're part of the body. The church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So he is the first one that walked this road. He's the first one that, that, that walked, walked in the earth like Christ did. Christ is the first one. He didn't have, he, he never offended God, ever. And now if you're in him, you can, I, can you see the capacity that we have in Christ Jesus? We have the capacity to please God. Anyway, this table of remembrance, I, I was, I was, thinking about all these things and thinking about what Christ has accomplished, then we come to this table to remember in joy, in the anticipation of the, the communion, the fellowship that we're going to have in him. And it's not like, like, well, you better come, although you better. It's that you're, you're welcome in the beloved. You've been made a part because you're in him. Anyway, I'm, I, I hope I didn't overwork this too much, but I, I was glorying this week in this thought that he set him to be the firstborn, the first of a new thing, and then he put you in him. Amen. You're a part of this. That's why you can come to this table and you feel at home. You can feel, you, 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 uh, you want to drink his blood and you want to eat it. You, you, you want because he's changed inside of you. He's changed. He's made you compatible with himself in Christ Jesus. I praise God for it. Amen. All right, let's pray. Dear Father,